Welcome to Faith Hour, a service offered by Faith Church International, a Seventh-day Adventist church in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, with Pastor Brian Mungundi as pastor. Faith Church International is committed to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ to make the gospel meaningful and relevant to your daily experience as you work, love, and live. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about God's love, giving us a second chance, and hope in life. We urge you to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Allow Him to be Lord, and you will find new meaning in life. Faith Hour hopes that today's program will help make your days a little bright. God bless you all. Who accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins and believe that by God's grace through faith in his shed blood you are saved from sin and its penance. Do you so believe? Do you accept Christ? The book of Amos, chapter 5, I will read in your hearing, verse 14 and 15. Amos, chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And thus may the Lord God of hosts be with you, just as you have said, hate evil, love good, and establish justice in the gates. Perhaps the Lord God of hosts may be gracious to the remnants of Joseph. May the Lord add a blessing to us for reading his words. Amen. I read the story. I read the story of a young man who stood in front of the church ready for baptism. He has been looking forward to this day for months. Now the day had come. He stood there in front ready to take his baptismal vows. He had made a decision for baptism without the help of his family. He never went to church as a young child. His family was not the kind of family that is a, a God-fearing or church-going family. And so as he stood up in front, when the pastor asked the question, do you renounce the devil and the forces that defy God? The young man shouted, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them shouted the young man again. The pastor continued, Do you believe in God the Father? And the young man answered and said, I believe in God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. You know, this young man's forceful response was a reminder to all that were in church that day that in baptism we seek after good, not evil. 
My friends, baptism is a daily commitment to seeking good, not evil. Baptism is your lifelong promise that henceforth you will seek after good, not evil. Baptism is a rite of passage, a transition from death into life eternal, from darkness into light, from hopelessness into hopefulness. Baptism is your public confession of the overflow of your faith. Church, I want to tell you that when I was reading this counsel that Amos was giving to Israel, I was moved. You see, the prophet says that those people who seek God's presence are seeking what is good. Uh, uh, those people who seek God's blessings, God's grace will come upon them. Uh, those of you who are getting baptized today, my dear friends, I want to tell you, you are joining a line of people who believe that they cannot be any greater privilege or blessing than to have God on your side. It's a privilege. It's a privilege and a blessing to have God on your side. God watching over you. God guarding you. God keeping you safe and protecting you. What a privilege. Uh, you see, when you get baptized, you are saying you have faith in God. You are expressing your faith to the community. You are saying my whole heart and my whole body is surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are promising you are promising that by God's grace you will seek to live right. You want to do good. Church, I am saying it's our privilege as a people to always seek to do good. We should love Good. We should share good with others. For this is what God requires of us. Now, 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 now. I know, I know that there will be times in this life when we will fall short of the perfection that God is looking for. I, I know. I know that there will be times in this life that we will mess up and not represent the good that is in God. I know that. Yes, I know that. I know there will be times when we will fail to demonstrate the faithfulness that God requires of his people. So I want to suggest to you what I have learned in my own life. I want to suggest to you that I've discovered in my own life that the ways of God and God's nature does not change when we mess up. No. God's loyal love would not run out. His mercy will not dry up. God's mercy and his love are new every morning for you and for me. He 
his faithfulness is great you can stick with God you can say it over and over again God is good you can take it to the bank he won't change he won't change just because we mess up our standing in his sight won't change when we mess up God wants us to get up and try again seek after that which is good God wants to God wants us to make our hearts delight in loving good God is hoping God is hoping that you will desire to seek after that which is good. Uh, you, you can depend on his grace. God wants to empower you so that your actions and your attitude will, will demonstrate in your life and show evidence that you are children of God. We, we, we must live right. We must do good. We must, we must show this in the way we live. We must show it in the way we think. We must show it in the way we speak. That we have a relationship with God. The prophet says to you and to me and to the Israel of old. He says, seek good and not evil. That you may live. And thus may the Lord God of hosts be with you. The prophet is aware. The prophet is aware that our goodness at its best is imperfect. We, we can never by our own self commend ourselves to be acceptable to God. You see, at our very best... Everything we do still have a tendency towards sin about it. We, we, we always are deserving of God's wrath. We have this, this propensity towards evil. Even the men and women who are, have, have surrendered completely to God, who have committed uh, themselves to God, uh, even those that God has given uh, honor and divine light and power, they still confess of their sinfulness of this nature. They have not put confidence in the flesh. They have claimed the righteousness of Jesus Christ. My friends, the devil will challenge us. The devil will, will, will bring trials to us. He, he will tempt us. But I want to say to you, hold on to Jesus Christ. That's what the prophet is saying. You see, he says, seek good and not evil, that you may live. And then he says, and may God, the Lord of hosts, be with you. So I want to say, first, if you are not baptized, Please surrender yourself to God and get baptized. What that means is you are turning towards God. You are making the expression of your faith public. You are saying you want to depend on God's mercy all the time. By so doing, you are joining many who are seeking after good. You are joining many who want to acknowledge that they need God's mercy. A church, when we come together every Sabbath, as a community of worshipers, 
We are making confession of the fact that we are still far short of the holiness and goodness of God. And yet we are saying we are determined by God's grace to continue to seek good and not evil so that we may live. When I was studying this passage, I began to notice that the prophet's challenge here to us, his challenge is that we must come to a point in our lives when we realize that God loves all people. But only those that seek after God can experientially benefit from that love. God's love will benefit those that seek good and not evil. The prophet is saying we should seek after God. We, we should seek after God to live. It's like a boy and a girl. It's like a boy and girl who love each other. They want to spend time together. They, they even plan to spend the rest of their lives together. And if they are committed to each other, they get married. In the same way, when you love Jesus, you will want to follow him. You, you, you will want to follow him and be his disciples. You will listen to his words. You will want to be in his presence. You will want to fellowship with him. You will want to commit your whole life to him. You will want to sing his praise. So my friend, if you love Jesus, you need to surrender to him and get baptized. Church, when we love, when we love God, We declare our love by baptism. It means we are willing to leave ourselves under the protection of God. It means we are willing to receive God's blessings for our lives. We are willing to allow his perfect righteousness to envelop us. What we are saying when we get baptized is that, is that we are allowing Christ to begin to live his life in us. God, you see, when you get baptized, you are seeking after good because God is the sum total of everything that is good and everything that is righteous. Uh, you see, those of you who have decided to get baptized today, I pray that you would seek God every day. I pray that you would study his words and, and you will meditate upon it and you will learn to pray and you will become part of the fellowship of believers. Oh, my friend, what a privilege it will be for you because God is gracious and merciful. I believe that God is always ready to bless I believe that God will not force his blessings on those that refuse to turn to him. There they must be genuine signs in your life for repentance. And when there is genuine seeking after good, God's grace will respond to you in mercy. So can I tell you, can I tell you that the Greek word... Baptizo is used in the New Testament to denote baptism by immersion underwater.
The Bible teaches that baptism by immersion is a biblical ordinance. John says in John chapter 3, he says, unless a man is born of water, meaning by baptism underwater, and by the spirit, meaning the renewal of the spirit of God in your life, that man cannot enter the kingdom of God. Friends, biblical baptism by immersion is essential and necessary for any individual to become a member of God's visible remnant church and become part of God's kingdom. In the New Testament, the Bible points out that all believers must follow the example of the Savior by being baptized by immersion underwater. When you do that, by God's grace, you are accepting the complete work of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. He died for us. He died so that we can receive mercy. He died so that our sins can be washed away by his shed blood. That's why I'm saying to you, church, biblical baptism by immersion underwater is important. It's your act of acceptance. You are accepting by faith your death with Christ. You are accepting by faith your resurrection in the new life with Christ. You see, when you surrender to Christ, you are accepting the renewal by the Spirit in your life. When, when your whole body goes underwater in baptism, it symbolizes that you are expressing your desire that no aspect of your life will escape your surrender to Christ. Uh, may I also say to you baptismal candidates for today, and I will say this to all of us as members, that these vows that we just read, allows us to make a public stand as a sign that we want to follow the truth so that we can publicly and privately want to demonstrate our acceptance of the, rev the revelation of God's word. We want to show that the word of God has opened before our eyes a new way of life and new prospects. Uh, when we remind ourselves constantly of these vows, we are saying we now regard our lives, that we are going to live our lives in honor to glorify God. We are no longer afraid to walk this path of life because Christ says, I will be with you always, even to the end of the earth. Church, I am saying, baptism is your Christian public way of saying, I love God. I now have a new sense of strength to make important decisions of life. I have a sense of peace with God because God has reconciled us to himself in Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that the moment you believe the gospel, your status change. You are no longer alienated from God by your sins, but you have become a son or a daughter of God. You are now precious in his sight, and you are now a heir to the kingdom that, is, that Christ is preparing for all those that believe. So I just want to challenge you, church. I want to challenge you. Love the Lord your God with all your hearts with all your soul, with all your strength,
with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. As your pastor, I want to say to those of you who are getting baptized here today, we will stand together with you. We will help you grow in your faith. We will walk with you as you walk with Jesus Christ. Here in this church, we want to declare our willingness to publicly declare faith in Jesus Christ. We are saying we want to seek good and not evil. We are saying we want to live. We are saying we want to talk about God. We want, to, we want God to be our best friend. We want to live like people who believe in God so that by God's grace we, we, should, we should allow our lives to demonstrate that we are God's people. People who hate evil and love to do good. We want to wake our faith in the public square so that we can be his light. We, we want to represent God as a remnant church and we want to make it known because God is gracious. Amen. Can I also say to those of you who are already baptized members of the church. Please, please, please remember that as we baptize these men and women who are the candidates today, they are just making their public expression that they have changed their lives from the old ways to the new ways in Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, they may still smell like the world. They may still talk like the world. They may still dress like the world. They may still speak like the world. But by God's grace, let's support their desire for change. It is a process. It's not instant food. For you and me, those of us who have already been baptized, this is again our opportunity to re-express our faith in Jesus Christ. So church, as we accept these men and women that are being baptized into the fellowship, let's affirm them. Let's encourage them in their expression of faith. We should stand by faith together. We should acknowledge salvation together. Let's accept them as brothers and sisters in the Lord. And let's accept their commitment to walk this life of faith and to allow their lives to be pure and good. Let's encourage them to experience joy as the Holy Spirit begins to work in their lives. Therefore, church, I want to say to us all, as we go to the baptistry after lunch, today we are celebrating together the might works of God in the hearts of these men and women. Now they have become his children. God has worked in them to bring them to repentance and to faith in Jesus Christ. We are celebrating the fact that they have received Jesus Christ as their personal savior. When we go to the baptistry, we, and we baptize them, we baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit,
We are celebrating the involvement of the entire Godhead in their hearts to change them so that they can become heirs of the kingdom. You see, when we immerse them in water, we are celebrating the fact that they have chosen to die to sin and be buried with Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. When we raise them out of water, we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ and we are affirming their testimony in their hope that all those that believe will be resurrected in the second resurrection to enjoy eternal life forever with Jesus Christ. You see, when they walk out of that baptismal pool, we are celebrating the fact that by God's grace they are walking into the newness of life with Jesus Christ. Uh, you see, when, when uh, we want to celebrate that, that uh, Jesus in his own way has given them and us power to walk as believers. Faith Hour is a TV program produced by Faith Church International in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. We hope you have been blessed by today's broadcast. Please note that Faith Hour also offers a free online Bible study course to help you become acquainted with the Bible as you deal with issues and challenges of your everyday life. We would like to invite you to join our live worship service. We gather every Saturday, the Lord's Sabbath day, at 9.30 a.m. for music and Bible study. And then at 11 a.m., we have a preaching service with messages that are relevant to real needs in people's daily lives. If you are looking for a power-filled worship service where you can encounter the love of God, we invite you to join us in worship and experience God's amazing love. Call us at the phone numbers on the screen or visit our website for more information. God bless you and yours.